All right, let's take a look at the PTR patch notes for February 6, 2017. This is the Lucio patch. It's playable on PTR now, not yet on live server. That should be a week later on February 14th or 15th. Uh, Lucio is a new announced hero. He is an Overwatch hero that uses the power of music to amp up his teammates and to uh, distract the opponents. We have a gameplay on Lucio already on the YouTube channel. We just showed it on Twitch as well. So you can see what Lucio is like if you want to find out about the newest hero. But let's take a look here at the reworks that uh, have happened on some of the heroes. These are the changed heroes. Some are getting pretty big changes, some very small ones. We'll just take one, each one as it goes. Hinterland's Blast uh, will be remembered by many of you as having been changed to deal slightly more damage at double the cooldown or something. It's the two minute cooldown joke heroic that should only be played by everyone who consistently messes up Mighty Gust, which is actually a rather scary large percentage of people. However, it has been buffed. 25 seconds of reduction in the cooldown for enemy, every enemy hero hit. Since it is 120 seconds, if you hit the entire enemy team, well, you can cast it again. Talk about Wombo Combo. Infinity Blast. Of course, that would mean they're not dead yet. And I think after the second Hinterlands Blast, the other team will be fairly oh, dead. Greymane's marked for the kill, the much maligned heroic by pretty much everyone has been reworked and renamed to cursed bullet or cursed bullet you'll remember it used to be a five second vulnerability with a pretty slow moving projectile that would make someone vulnerable refreshable if you keep attacking them it was okay but it was not as reliable or or having as good utility as go for the throat it's now been changed 35% of current health as a damage. That means if you hit a full target, that is an insane amount of damage. Let's say you use this on a tank, you could just do, boom, 1400 damage in a single hit. Uh, and it has a very short cooldown, only 30 seconds. In order to make it not OP, you cannot kill one third heroes instantly. Cannot hit vehicles. I had a few theories about what that means. The vehicle of Ariel's Hope, as in bestow hope targets, cannot hit them. Cannot hit Sergeant Hammer. Or maybe you cannot hit Vulture Bike Rainer because he's riding a vehicle. Logic in the end triumphed as well as reading up on Reddit. And it is actually the Dragon Knight, the Garden of Terror, any big boss monster that you can control and go inside as a hero. Which is pretty nice because Percentage based damage on Garden Terror and Dragonite are pretty OP. So it doesn't work on those. So now we have a very short cooldown, nice opener of a fight. Where you just shoot someone early. Maybe you can use it a second time in a fight and you do really significant damage. Then Gilnean Roulette will hit all enemy heroes in its path and reduces its cooldown by 5, per sec uh, five seconds per hero hit. Realistically, you should not expect to hit more than two which will make it a 25 second cooldown double hit. In the rare circumstance that you do hit five enemy heroes and you can recast it again five seconds later, please post the GIF to Reddit. We'll all enjoy seeing that very much. Ragnaros, Resilient Flame is super OP. Anytime he got stunned, he got a short duration during which he had 50% armor, taking half damage from all sources. Now it has a 10 second cooldown. This is a much needed change because this talent was overperforming massively. And there's a button so you can track the cooldown. That's a good change. Well done, Blizzard. Earthquake and Sunder were some of the heroics that got countered the most often by enemy disruptions. Either displacement or a stun or a silence. I think that was good. If you wanted to counter Thrall, Thrall who has not a care in the world, just walks in the middle of a fight, mm, enough, turns on Earthquake. Back to Thrall, I think it was good that when Earthquake, Thrall moved in the middle of a fight and decided to, without a care in the world, try to activate his heroic, you had the ability to cancel Earthquake. I thought it was skill-based, it was fun, 
you could set up to interrupt it. There was play and counterplay. So I do not think that this was a necessary change. Yes, they're overly sensitive, but it created counterplay. I don't agree with this one, even as I agreed with everything else so far. That's okay. I'm just a lone voice in the wild. Valera, lots of changes, guys. Uh, she had a pretty poor win rate, even as you can still cancel it, someone said. Well, it doesn't look like that to me, but uh, we'll have to see how the playtesting goes. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, so Valera's win rate was a little bit lower. Even though I think she's a character that will upset people if she performs well or above well. So I can't say that I'm super excited about her getting buffed. Even as I tried her recently and she was actually pretty fun and not as difficult as I initially felt. Her basic attack damage goes up just a tad. A little bit less than uh, 5%. 4% nerf should do it. Ambush energy reduction. This is the one that she uses out of stealth, which does only damage. No stun or silence. As in, I would never use it. Garrote is her silence. The two second silence will now be 2.25. As, yes, Garrote was bad compared to the stun. I think so. I saw people arguing for all the three different ones, but the only one I would ever come out of stealth with was the stun, which is called Cheap Shot. One and a half second stun is much better than a two second silence, even if it offers a bit of damage over time. This one is a nice buff, I suppose. The impact damage has been reduced and the poison damage has been reduced as well, which honestly, it could make it better against mages, especially someone like Li Ming, who relies on having abilities to get away. If you can do a, if you can use the level one poison on Valera, which does a 25% slow for a few seconds, and you combine that together with a 2.25 seconds spray. silence, that should pretty much kill Li Ming better than a stun could or would. So I will say that Garrote has some applications, which is exactly how you want it. But with the damage reduction, I just wonder that it's going to be too fringe. Too fringe situation. Now, I wouldn't say that Garrote's damage ever really mattered, because it's all about how many auto attacks you can weave in, how much you can set it up for your team during the time that you stun or silence someone. This kind of disable against certain characters could be the best. This might also be good against Murky, so that he cannot safety bubble. Cloak of Shadows was basically a tenth or a third of Smoke Bomb's effectiveness, I guess for a third of the cooldown. It was a one second unstoppable with a massive armor. Um, and now it's one and a half. I think that's a good change. I still think I'll take smoke bomb nearly all the time. Crippling poison is now a five second slow instead of a three second slow. I just talked about that one here, combining it with Garrote. This could be a pretty powerful interplay. Garrote with a five second slow on Li Ming, not bad. Keeping in mind, of course, that she can still teleport out of it. Wound poison. Duration increased from 4 to 5 seconds. This one is the one where they take less healing during 4 seconds, now 5. Again, it's an activatable that you can attach to one of your abilities. Assassinate, distance between enemy heroes reduced from 5 to 4 range. So, uh, assassinate is where you use ambush, which is your Q out of cloak, to do bonus damage on that target, so long as no one is within 5 range of that hero. Now it's 4, so it's slightly more forgiving, so this one uniquely is about isolating someone and damaging them. Now, this one doesn't allow you to do the stun or silence. But you do get the burst damage from Assassinate. Is that worth it compared to the other two? Maybe, maybe not. I think not. But it is true that if you 1v1 someone without the purpose of actually trying to kill them, doing more damage with this and then just running, if you only have one second with them, can be a nice poke damage. Friend. So not bad. Up to eleven. It's an option. Good luck next week. Thank you very much, Remush, for the resub and the wishes. And Darth Raider, thanks for subbing. Uh, Death from above. Teleport range increased from five to seven. This is a level thirteen ambush teleport behind someone. I took it once, forgot to use it. Not sure how good it is yet, but it's a buff. Rupture. 
Basic attacks against garroted enemies also increase the damage over time effect by 5%, stacking up to 30. And I'm trying to remember what the other point was. It was like attack speed or something? I'm not sure. Maybe it was like the super fast triple attack after garrote. I think that's it. Uh, Hat Hunter will no longer dismount Zul'jin when it's activated while mounted. That's the 5 take down, 1 on enemy, one on each enemy hero, revealing people anywhere where they are on the map. Can now do it while mounted. Nice. Valyra got buffed because her win rate was quite a bit below 50%. But because she's a hard hero, you can expect plenty of people to be misusing her. And therefore, I don't mind her being between 40 to 46% win rate. And allowing her to be good in the hands of good one, good people. So I think this is an overreaction. And I think the amount of buffs she got was too much. But they did buff a few poor talents. And that part I, I like a lot. I would say I'm 70% satisfied about Valera changes. But this part I have some serious frowns about it. But we'll see how it works. Out. Varian's banners have been moved to level 16 instead of 13. And his 16s have been moved to 13. This is both interesting and good, I think. I hadn't thought about it before, but if I had, I would have felt pretty smart thinking of it. Because I think just uh, on first preview, and I haven't looked at this yet, it's going to be a really good thing. Uh, first of all, I think banners at level 13 are too strong. They are the movement speed, ability power, and armor banner. It comes too early. And it's not important enough for his kit for your allies kit to come that early you don't take varian for that at level 13 it's a massive buff across the board for the entire allied team which is okay to come at 16 now why do we need level 16 at 13 it's because shattering throw can be a reason of picking varian there are so many shielding heroes in the game now zarya medivh doesn't count that's an infinity shield zarya Tassadar, Artanis are all very popular, very good, and they are shielding heroes, which can be frustrating to deal with. Tassadar and Tracer can be frustrating to deal with because she has such a small health pool, but becomes so survivable thanks to Tass. In comes Varian. Shattering Throw does triple auto attack damage on shielded targets, and you have a throw that does thousands of shield damage. Only shield, nothing else. Maybe like 100 damage for the rest. Having that come at level 16 is too late to use him as a counter hero, but having it at 13 is just perfect. Same with Mortal Strike. It's an auto attack, enemy healing receive reduction. Juggernaut is the percentage based damage. These two coming earlier is really good design, I think, and very good for timing. And that's exactly what Blizzard said as well, so I agree with that. Good changes. Abathur, one of the lowest win rate heroes ever. On the ladder, one of the most effective heroes in the right situation in pro games. So, in buffing him, they need to be very careful. Some he people will never get Abathur. Oh my god, AFK brain slug in the base, what are you doing? Will you start participating? You're always in the base. Like, yeah, some people take Abathur because they are just slow. They are just not very good and that is okay because he's a very special hero that's why he's a specialist i'm okay with that i don't think he needs buffs for that reason he is such a special strong hero nonetheless Greetings, friend. they want his ladder win rates Dear to be balanced as well it's not just about and useful tips it's not just about uh, uh pro play and i get that as well heroes of the storm has many layers of participation so he does get a tiny buff. Again, it's a 4% damage buff to his Q, his Spike Burst, and to his Carpe. It's just head maths. No? Just uh, guesstimating here. Replace Sue, thank you for the reset, man. My pleasure. And now we get to the cherry on the cake. Murky. Murky gets a big health increase. About 20%. He will now respawn in 8 seconds instead of in 5 seconds. His slow on Q goes up. His puffer fish now deals reduced damage to structures. Can be targeted by structures. It now has health instead of being a triple hit puffer fish. But it will take damage from abilities. So it has received the same treatment as totems, earth allies and healing ward. 
Explosion radius has been increased. The cooldown of March of the Murlocs has been reduced. And the movement speed of the Tiny Murlocs has been increased. Now let's take a look at his talent overview. First we'll look at the overview. It's Fisheye, Egg Hunt, a fish deal. Slime Time, Tougher Fish, Live in Dream. Black Lagoon, Slippery One Wet, Time to Krill. March and Octograb. Rejuvenating Bubble Fish, Thank Eggshell. Note that everything that's not in italics is a talent name that previously existed, but it may have changed. Toxic Buildup, Fish Oil, and Wrath of God, Never Ending, and a Shark 2. Big Tuna Kahuna, and Make an Inky. A big rework, and we're going to try out Murky after this game. After this review. Fish Tank. 75 armor block. Bubble Breeze has been renamed to Slippery When Wet. Move to level 7. Increase the movement speed even more, and it also allows him to pass through enemies. Assault Egg has been renamed to Fish Eye. Bonus health of the egg has been doubled instead of 25 Sight Radius bonus increase has been buffed. It also reveals Stealthies. That's insane, you can use it while... You can use it aggressively, finally. And actually, see those zeros and novas, pretty insane. Now increases Murky's mounted movement speed to 45% for 5 seconds after spawning. Insane. Bribe's been removed, but now you have something else, as we remember. Activate to place a fake egg. If the fake egg dies, it casts slime. <laughs> Maximum 3 fake eggs! <laughs> yes! Bravo, chapeau! Six second cooldown, three fake eggs. Oh, yes. Well done. Upon spawning from an egg, Murky is also stealth for five seconds. <laughs> okay. All right. Does this fake egg synergize with assault egg or is it the same tree? Oh, it's at the same tree. Killing an enemy minion with puffer fish grants one stack of bribe. Use five bribe stacks to capture a single mercenary. Huh. Alright. Bigger slam. Renamed to Black Lagoon. Tougher fish. Tougher fish does 35% more damage to slam target and it gains 50 spell armor. Live in the dream. No longer passively grants ability power. Instead of granting 1% ability, it grants 5% every 15 seconds. Max 15% ability power. The reason they would do this is why. Make it more reliable how much damage you think you're going to be doing. So you don't have an exclamation mark every second. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I'm not sure why, but they did it. Maybe they'll explain why. No. Time to krill. Oh, there's I more. Thank you. Chapeau for the fake egg. <laughs> Chapeau. Thanks, uh, Avalolo. Slime time. Quest. Slime enemy heroes that are already slammed. You'll slime them for more damage and you'll slime them for more slow. Nice. Basic attacks against enemy heroes deal an additional 8 damage per second and slow the target's movement speed by 10% for 5 seconds. So within those 5 seconds, if you hit again and then again and again, you can slow them for 50%. And you do damage per second. Pretty nice. Continuous slime. Renamed to making inky. It's been moved to 20. Cooldown reduction increase from 1 to 2. So your slime normally is like 4 seconds. And it can become 2. Your Q. Nice. Wrath of God has been moved to 16. And Pufferfish deals bonus damage to enemy heroes. Equal to 10% of their max health over 5 seconds. Ouch. Eggshell. Responding from an egg grants Murky a shield equal to 100% of his max health. It's a level 13 talent. This shield lasts indefinitely. Oh. He can just have 2000 HP from the egg. That seems really strong. What does it compete with again? Let's see. It competes with... Rejuvenating Bobble and Fish Tank. Oh man, they're all really good. 
It depends if you want to die and swarm, if you want to block auto attacks, or heal with your bubble. Situationally, all very good. Murky seems to be a god. You better start making a murky altar, guys. <clears throat> New talent, toxic buildup. Attacking an enemy hero three times causes a slam to be cast from their position. From their position? Wow. So that's better than from your own because you can hit someone behind them more easily. Huh. Renamed to fish oil. So you still have slimy puffer fish. Rewind has been removed. Bolt has been removed. Never ending murlocs can now be channeling indefinitely. And big tuna kahuna. Murky's max health and egg respawn times are doubled. Wait, what? Come on, bro. So you take big tuna kahuna and you take eggshell. And you're what? 5k HP? <laughs> That's a big tuna. Alright. Moving on from this crazy... Crazy hero. 6.6k HP on 20. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, 6.6k? It should have been 6666 because that is sick! Anyway, Nazebo, uh, the targeting indicator now more accurately reflects the Toad's travel path and Dead Rush. Yes! Dead Rush can now be cancelled and you still get the five uprooting zombies. Thank God. Morales grenade will now reveal a small area around the grenade as it travels. Warrior Muradin. Crowd control. No! Before when you were in a Zerg wave on Braxis holdout, you could be like... Cleared. No mana cost. Infinite reduction of cooldown. Now only 7 seconds reduction, which is kind of too bad. As Muradin's base cooldown is 8 seconds, so you need to actually... Wait a second every time. It was so sick before. Anyway. Thunderstrike. Icon color swap to blue. Swap to green. Okay. Cool. Uh, Zarya now has a crit indicator when she deals bonus damage with the 50% bonus damage at close range. Alright. That's good. Furthermore, Mac players not... <laughs> Mac player. There are Mac players. We should respect them. Uh, uh, will no longer automatically increase mass acceleration. Corrected the scaling damage caps for several talents that deal damage based on the percentage of the target's max health, including... Da -da 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 -da. Hmm, I didn't know there was anything wrong with that. Art. Nova's status bar will no longer pop above her head while running. M Monkey King Summer... Wasn't there a Monkey King image bug as well? Let's see. Zerg units become stuck in the walls of their pens. Let's see if there's any significant bug uh, improvements. Uh, yeah, he wasn't benefiting from regen globes in raven form. Okay. While transforming. Lava wave cooldown will be passed during Zeratul's void prison. Uh, if Rag is inside or in general. Will no longer be pulled out of ghost wall form upon dealing damage by an ally. Really? Wasn't there like 15 bugs more on Rhaegar? Accidentally attacking something else. Accidentally not attacking. Anyway. Refresh advancing strikes after landing a crit. Shift Q and Hearthstone will no longer break stealth. Burning Blade area of effect will now properly benefit from bonus damage. Really? It didn't? Man, well, that's gonna help his wave clear a little bit. Bladestorm will no longer occasionally fail to activate after casting these two in rapid succession. Fix the issue where this goes. Man, Samara had a lot of bugs. Incorrect number of gems. Oh yeah, I remember that. Hundreds. But they didn't fix Samara's Monkey King color bug, where images are a different color than him if you don't take tint number one. 
Voila. Killing enemy heroes who have post-death states will still proc death dealing. Good. What? They unresearched troll regeneration upgrade. Oh, that was fixed in previous patch? Excellent. Thanks for letting me know. So Samuro no longer has a Monkey King image color bug. Thanks for letting me know, guys. You're awesome. Illidan, the hunt voiceover, will no longer play slightly early. So that people will not be prepared anymore. Oh, what about uh, Artanis' global death sound? Wherever he dies, you hear him in your in your head. Ugh. Graviton search and expulsion door info so over will no longer play slightly early. Okay. I give this patch an 8.2 out of 10. Mostly hits the spot. But I will say this. I never asked for or wished for a murky rework. And I am quite frankly... Kind of fearful for his effect as an unkillable hero can be pretty interesting to go up against. Switching crossfade tracks, if the next song plays for at least one and a half seconds, Lucio gains a shield that lasts indefinitely. Alright. Can't stop, won't stop. While well, Wallwright's movement speed bonus is active, immune to slow and root. That's easy to test. Oh, I like the sound of that. I hear that. If there is a fort. Yeah, can't get slowed by the fort. Pretty sick. Turn it up. Nice. Now that's my jam.